Okay, this is the brilliant intro now. Oh, I don't have it. You can't repeat it. (laughs) No, I can't do that again. So, um, I'm holding a portable recorder because the best we could do today is a few minutes uh, of downtime up in the upstairs bedroom. Yeah, the guest room. With the kids locked out. (laughs) (laughs) This weekend has been nuts. So, like, Friday morning... The year has has been nuts. But, like, just... Friday morning, I posted an Ask Me Anything on my Facebook page. Yeah. And then the children proceeded for the rest of the weekend to ask me everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, bleh, bleh, ah, bleh, bleh. every five, ten minutes, something else stupid. But sometimes yeah. it was like a thing, like mm. a legitimate thing. But it was frequently just like, I, uh, I, do I have to do my chores? No, really. No, no. Do I have to do my chores? Yeah. Are you kidding? No. No, you really. I'm, yeah. I'm asking. You have to do your chores. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's been a real challenge not to resort to child abuse. <laughs> so, um, the last time we spoke was April? I think it might have been April. Yeah. Because it wasn't March anymore. We did a, uh, one podcast right at the early on and then i made another recording of a walk i think yeah um and then but we haven't done anything more with podcasting so i had lots of plans i went through lots of plans um one of the plans was for a while to uh, practice and record and send out a song a day you did for several days to people who followed me on marco polo yeah. And I also posted some of them on Facebook. Yeah. And occasionally a clip on Twitter. Um, but what was that? I think someone just texted me or tweeted me or Where's something. Your, oh, it's purse? in your purse. Okay. Yeah, yeah they're going to start harassing us via all our devices, pinging and bing, ringing. Bing, 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 um, but, um, that's great. But, go on. but I actually did that for three weeks. No, it was nice. Um, I, but then after that, I sort of stopped because I got deep into the gardening. Yeah, like neck deep. Yeah, and um, I couldn't do both. It was just too much time. But some of the other projects that I in, sort of had intentions for mm-hmm. um, included working on an open source project Yeah, that also would have been applicable to my work. Mm-hmm. And um, working on a novel that I have an outline and notes for. Yeah. Working on a number of articles. Uh, um, and also uh, uh, recording some original songs. Oh, yeah. But somehow all of this didn't happen. But a lot happened. So I've much been happened. been incredibly busy. So much happened. Like, busy... Uh, the things that didn't happen are the things that um, I thought probably would right? when I have like time off work, which is I thought I'd read a lot of books. I haven't finished a single book since since March, which is... Like how? I mean, sometime, some, we- some, some years, years I was getting through more than a book, book a week. week. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I haven't finished a single book, and I've barely read any anything in print at all. No, it's, it's a little weird. Yeah. No, I, I've just been doing the, you know what I always do? It's just like a damn treadmill, you know? It's just a treadmill. So that's why, I think that's why I'm like reluctant to get on the treadmill. <laughs> oh, you feel like you're already on it? I'm already on the treadmill. So what did you, um, tell me what it's been like for you, because this is not so different from your regular routine, except everyone's stuck at home. Yeah, that's a bit intense. And the kids, so the kids aren't going to any of their usual. No, for a while activities. they had Zoom calls for like choir and and youth group and stuff. Yeah. Um. Not doing much. Yeah. Anymore, even even that. But well, um, choir's done for the summer, done for summer anyway. But. but the the big difference is when we went places, and it was usually I want to say five days a week. At least five days a week, week, you were out at 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 least one thing. At least one thing with at least one kid. Right. Not all, not all kids every day, but oh. thank God. But. Thank God. But um, but no. So every so every day, I would have 
like an hour, sometimes two. I'm just kind of like chill time. Like even if the babies were with me, they would sleep in the car, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you could. I'd yeah. grab a coffee. I'd just chill out, and um, I, I didn't do anything noble. I would just sit there and stare in space. Yeah, which yeah. is what it's literally just decompressing a it's, bit. Right. So that's just gone. Yeah. That's just gone, and I, and I um, was an early advocate, and still am, of if you need to just leave, especially the grown-ups, um, just leave. Don't make an excuse to go to the store or the post You're office or some other BS thing. To, to, if you need to get out of our quarantine zone for a bit, right. either just go for a walk or go just take drive. the car and drive somewhere. Just right. drive around. Don't just, you don't have to go to a destination. Right. You don't have to go to a destination. You can just leave. So you can just leave. Yeah. That's you know you don't have to justify I, it. I have spent so many years though not doing that. Like yeah, that was something my family did a lot. Was like Sunday drives, like aimless oh, yeah. Sunday drives. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of fun and soothing routine, but I can't, like, I don't feel good about just burning gas. Burning you know? gas. Well, we're burning so much less gas. Well, that's true. Right. I have only filled my tank once since March 13th. Wow, I didn't know it was that little. I won't just once, I wow. think. Uh, maybe. Now, I'm pretty sure that's true. Maybe twice, but I only remember doing it once. Yeah, yeah. I've only, I've, I've filled it twice. Because we've only gone to, like, Costco three times, Target three times, you know. Yeah, we haven't made Trader a lot of trips. Joe's once. We like a couple t- twice, th- twice Trader Joe's. Okay, twice to Vestergaard. Mm-hmm. So, like a couple days, we had like multiple outings. Right. But that was usually in your car. We mm-hmm. filled your car a couple times. Your car is a much bigger tank. Right. Um, but yeah, that's so like I was. That should have been like. 15 fill-ups right. un- under normal circumstances yep. by now. So that's a pretty shocking change. It's really shocking. So, um, so yeah. So I, I, I think it's really okay to just go for it. And um, the teenagers, I've asked them to walk each day so they aren't sitting here stewing in their own juices, getting ready to, you know. Stinking up the place. <laughs> yeah, just getting ready to chew into somebody. So, so yeah, and they've... Uh, kind of done it. We've had so much resistance and so many blow-ups and so much pushback just to doing daily chores. Just doing daily chores. And the little kids have been little kids running around, and that's you know, that's yeah. not been different. But but yeah. the the big challenge is not is not really being able to decompress ever. Right away from the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. that's challenging. And I've I've you know, and I have gotten out. Of, you know. Run an errand, or just you know, gone for a drive to right clear your head, clear my head or something, or to, you know to do that decompressing. But um, yeah, but it's not really on the table as a daily activity or like five five times a week activity. Yeah, so I mean, when I think about all this, also I think about how you know we got a big stimulus check and I got enhanced unemployment, and mm-hmm. so like we could continue to live i I Mm -hmm. made put my mortgage on like a what do they call that um they take it on to the end no the the um, forbearance forbearance right and then supposedly they're going to tack three months payments onto the end so um so things have been like I mean, there been there's been a lot of stress associated with getting all that paperwork worked out. Yeah, getting unemployment took forever, and there was some lot of weird pushback and. Yeah. Um, and. But yeah. But all that said, we actually did it, get money. It all came through. And we got food benefits. Yep. And so. Fucking wick. This is well because it's own disaster, but I mean. But, like, we can go to Costco and buy a big load of groceries and have it paid for mostly, and except for non-perishable like stuff and, and yeah. diapers. By, um, no, yeah, not non-perishable, non-foods. Non-food items. Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, that'll be shut off now eventually. Yeah. It takes a while to wind down. Yeah. Um, it's based on when they get reported income and process it. Mm-hmm. But, um, and the unemployment will get wound down. Mm-hmm. But we've been very fortunate, and an awful lot of people could are not, waiting for a stimulus check. They're still. either still waiting for a stimulus check, or they're either still working, or they're still working, or they're not working, but desperate in desperate trouble. Yeah. 
and um yeah especially renters and this is going to be a long hot summer of evictions of evictions and chaos and angry frustrated people ready to lash out ready to lash out and um oftentimes you've said this all the time people like identify the 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 problem and the leverage point in yeah. a system and then they push the lever in the opposite direction hard where as they it can needs to go hard as they can like bam so like you know like let's go cough in people's faces you know? yeah right. <laughs> so okay yeah okay so COVID-19 is actually a leverage point you're right yeah. you're right yeah <laughs> however yeah so um I had a point. I don't mm. know. This is going to be incoherent because we didn't actually prep at all. We just no like, long hot summers where you were. Yeah, but, but like, I'm I f- have a lot of sympathy for people, especially with kids, who like either are or aren't going to be going back to school, and maybe they're being forced to go back to work even though they don't have it, school or child or care. summer like any of the summer programs or any of the stuff any of the things to occupy the kids a lot of people to leave them to go to work yeah and i guess they're just gonna like forcibly send the kids back to school like here we go we're doing this okay come on kids come It'll on be great come we're on. just gonna hold you down when you come in <laughs> sanitizer yeah try not to try not to kill your grandparents don't touch your face kids yeah. Don't pick your nose. The kindergarten, stop ne- picking your never nose. Never pick your nose and never, don't touch anything in the bathroom. Yep. Not even yourself. Just hold it. <laughs> it's going to be great. Which is what I did in high school. Well, yeah. That, that was a different kind of virus. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but I have to say, um, <coughs> I've heard some creative things about like colleges reopening and, and let's, let's just be frank for a moment. Colleges are reopening because they're hemorrhaging. Yeah. Churches are reopening because they're hemorrhaging. Right. Well, you you talked about this a little bit. You're like, they most churches never figured out how to do fundraising other than passing you know, in, in any significant number other than the the regular in person collection, right. and they just were not able to like quickly pivot. Not to mention all their parishioners and whatnot are suddenly panicked about their their, jobs. their money. Right. And so maybe that would be one of the first things to go is like if you don't have money, what is a tithe? You know, right? right? Even so, if you're tithing, right? Ten percent of nothing Your is still nothing. Is, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's. So, but I've seen some creative things that, like, I, was it Oberlin, is bringing people back? I think early. They're doing three semesters, and they won't send students home on breaks at all. Hmm. So they'll stop at Thanksgiving and they'll come back again in January. Hmm. Um, so like no fall break, no Thanksgiving break, none of that stuff. <laughs> and then, um, you know, so it's 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 an interesting approach. And I think they they also stopped they had to stop using their campus hotel entirely, and reserved it for uh, quarantining students who have symptoms. Wow. So. Okay. I mean that 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 could work. I guess. I mean, there's things they can do. It's just like I don't my, know how they're going to manage bathrooms, but okay. My question about um, yeah, I, I I read about one place that was converting every dorm room into a single. Yeah, Oberlin was doing that too. Yeah, um, and I thought that was a, a good idea. Are. But like you said, bathrooms are. I mean, not every single is going to have a single, single bathroom. bathroom. So uh, unless it's Yale, I think yeah. Yale had a few dorms like that. But yeah. Mm. So I don't, I don't have any good answers, but I do know that a lot of people have had great success with online classes. I've never taken an online class successfully, personally. Yeah. That has never happened for me once. I um, I'm very skeptical of them. Um, I'm I'm also very skeptical. I mean, the thing is, I like to work from home. I can get a lot of coding done, mm-hmm. but I'm skeptical of online meetings and especially things like Zoom for many reasons. Oh, right. First of all, I don't trust Zoom to be yeah. private and not just to be feeding my data into recognizer systems and text to speech and transcript. 
that you know uh, for foreign governments, literally for foreign governments. Foreign governments. Yeah. Like why foreign governments want access to your meetings? Uh, industrial espionage, for one. Oh shit! That's a good point. Okay, so. I, I'm 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 sorry. I'm thinking of Veronica's like youth group. Oh, her youth group. Right. I'm like, no, why would foreign government want to know what Veronica's talking they about? They probably youth group? don't care a lot, a lot about right. that. But industrial espionage is a thing. Yeah, but so is just data mining for like manipulating public opinion and yeah, boy, um, and marketing to yeah. Did we have we talked about narrative fucking? Not yet. Oh. Yeah, that that may be its own podcast. Well, honestly. yeah, you can hear the kids screaming in the background already. Um, already, yeah. Well, it will happen. We're not, we won't. We weren't going to do this for long. It's okay. No, we'll we'll survive. We'll make it's, it. It's so we had. Yeah, I, we're, again, we're not very organized tonight, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, like, and I just don't think, especially like, um, I, when things blew up in March, I. Mm-hmm had almost no warning that I was going to need to suddenly start working from home. And my home office was basically a place where I had been dumping everything that I unpacked from Saginaw. For three years. (laughs) Right, and not really ever got it properly set up. I mean, I had little space sort of set up very, very rapidly where I could do this and that and music this and that. Mm -hmm. But I hardly ever did it. So, I mean, I, I... I had a space to produce podcasts, right? Right. That was it. But that was about it. And then just, like, piles of stuff on the floor and piles of stuff on the desks. And so the starting... And, like, of course everything was in crisis. So, like, the idea that, okay, now I'm going to smoothly and seamlessly shift to being an at-home employee and just maintain my tremendous productivity right <laughs> you know like yeah not so much with, well like the world is, is falling apart blowing up right yeah, it's no. like okay i we should we should go easy on ourselves and like say take a deep breath and you know give yourself time to, and, and and everyone also immediately had kids at home yes right i mean we're used to having kids, kids at, at home, home but yeah. but a and lot it, of workers aren't and it frankly it frankly chose the house so that we could have some kid-free zones. Right. Right. Yeah, set up that way. Right. So that, right. because we're used to having kids at home. Right. And, you know, trying to keep it, so, keep that in check. I don't know if we even, even established what's happening, but one of the reasons I wanted to talk tonight is because I'm actually, yeah, in March I was abruptly put on furlough after one week of working from home. So, Because they had such a tight plan. We switched to working from home. I worked from home for one week, and then my company laid off what, almost number everyone? like six hundred and seventy-five engineers or something like something that. like that. Yeah, I don't. That's probably a, tra- a company secret or Oops. something. Uh, but a know. lot of, they laid off a lot of people. A lot of people, and yeah, they're just gonna, they just let them wander up the stairs and stand outside the door screaming. Yeah, that's they're supposed to be occupying, occupying the babies, keeping them in, engaged. Yeah, it's challenging. Yeah, they don't engineers march um, abruptly. Yeah, so, uh, so then you were off of work for right. the next three months, and now you've right. been called back. I've been called back, and actually, I'm starting tomorrow morning. Yes. Here comes Sam to get the baby. Yes. So Sam is a match. He's uh Oh Sam is gonna be such a good husband one day. Husband, oh my father, he's he's trying to help. Oh, he's carrying away the screaming baby, trying to entertain Boop-a-doo. him. Singing, gurgling. singing yeah. Okay. Boop-a-doo. Um I can still hear him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that kid has a he has a set of lungs on him. Uh, my goodness. Um he sounds kinda like a siren. Everything he says is kinda musical. But yeah. Going back to work. Tomorrow. So I'm going back to work and I'm happy and not happy about it. I mean the paycheck's nice. Uh, the paycheck, I like the paycheck. The paycheck's cool. nice. Um even though you and you enjoy the even work. though for years. I haven't actually had much disposable income because we have so many ex- expenses on expenses, including for th- for two and a half years paying two mortgages. Oh yeah! <laughs> and now I owe like 
forty thousand dollars in debt. Miscellaneous debt. So there's not a lot of you know. Not a lot of play. Uh, it's a big paycheck, but there's not a lot of. Not a lot of play. Well, I, it's nice. It's nice yeah. to have income. You know, I'm, yes. I'm I'm there for that. And do you enjoy the work you do? That's the thing. I do enjoy the work, and I like my coworkers. And my office is generally a nice place to work. But I'm kind of scared shitless to go back out to a job. Yeah. Uh, and arguably. They have not filled me with confidence that they take no. this seriously. They, I, you know, my, bo- they, they are. I, I work in an open area. Um, it's not, not, um, it's not a cube farm. Which um, is nice. There's quite a bit of space. I have a, a like a section of a, of a whole floor. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like an alcove. It's a. It's at the end of a very large open area. It's with a window, a, kind of a corner in the room, um, with a few like three desks and a bunch of bookshelves and computers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, in a typical work day, I'm not bumping up against people. So like even at all. So yeah. it's it's one of the safer workplaces you can imagine. Yep. And I'm gonna. Uh, when I'm around people, if we are meeting in a room together, I'm going to be wearing mask and face shield. Yeah. Um, but um, I just, I don't really feel great about it, and I'm concerned that I'm not going to be able to concentrate very well, you yeah. know, for some reason. I know. The um, plague is looming. Yeah. Don't think about it. Yeah. Just don't think about yeah. it. Yeah, well, that's... That's the thing, as my friend Rich points out, employers are mostly going to be trying to convince both you and themselves it's that business can be business as usual. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm such an ass. <laughs> And restaurants are doing the same thing. Yeah, it's great. Because there's no alternative for companies, for businesses. Well, there is, but... I mean, anyway, I mean, I'm going to be arranging to work from home, but they're going to... People need to talk. People need to work together. People need to, you know, to do this kind of thing. But, um, But, like, I mean, what's the alternative for restaurants when you say there is, you know? Oh, well... A lot of these companies vote for these shitheads that won't give them any money so they can keep their businesses open during a pandemic. Well, okay. So that was some short-term thinking on their part. (laughs) Um, And a lot of these companies are run by people who seem to think that every individual should have three-month savings in the bank. Yeah. Right. So, maybe they should have taken that good advice. Again, some right. short-term thinking on their part. Right. But that said, that said, there, I have seen a lot of family-owned businesses with a lot of institutional memory mm-hmm. pivot on a dime and keep almost everybody employed. Yeah. They turn to selling their inventory as as grocery store mm-hmm. because grocery stores had shortages. There was no shortage in the restaurant industry. They just repackaged everything and sold it like it was a, a grocery store. They started selling their own supplies. Right, chains. and they just turned to start doing carryout and delivery. Yeah. And yeah. Um, a lot of those places that did, did that kind of pivot kept 80%, probably 80% of their employees employed. Um, That's And, and cool. kept the doors open and the rent paid. That's cool. So, you know... Um, People have figured out how to juggle. A lot of people have figured out how to juggle and make things work. The only people that I see getting a raw deal long term, if we followed really good policy, public health policy, um, salons and barbershops get a really raw deal. Yeah, because there's it's really just, there's not any way to do that in person nope. safely. Nope. Not and really. and and also it's not. There's no real reason yeah. you have to go. Right. If you actually have a dental emergency, dentists can sure. actually stay open. Right. And frankly, there's a compelling case to be made that dental maintenance 
is, is medical care. Is medical care that course. needs to happen, right? Yeah. So even dentists who really can't do their job without being yes. a potential he is, vector. Using social distancing. Right, there's no way to do that. You haven't heard right. of teledentistry. <laughs> it's fantastic. You should try it. So you just like get the thing and they'll Set just like the camera right, right. In your mouth. And they'll just like talk you through it. It's really good. Yeah. You take the drill. Hold the, you hold the drill. I understand you can use like a black and decker you might have lying around the garage. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very um, very cathartic. Yeah. But seriously though, dentistry Dentistry has to go on. People are going to need their, you know. And while there is significant risk involved in that industry, uh, you know, there's significant risk involved in getting medical care, it has to happen. People will still go, and we can we can introduce lots of methods to keep it safe. Mm -hmm. um, well, we, we've finally sent our own son back to his... Um, Orthodontist. His orthodontist because he's been really late overdue for... Yeah, it's like two months overdue. Overdue for some adjustments. For some adjustments. And, and you yeah. know, and that can cause harm, and let's avoid the harm, right? Yeah. But um, they were very good. I mean, they had face shields. Mm -hmm. They they were really... Masked up. Masked and up. That. And actually, when you have adequate PPE, mm -hmm. medical care happens really quite well. It's hard for me to... And ventilation. And ventilation. Yeah. Yeah, but th those things combined, medical care can happen really well. Um, so are we going to have salons use medical-grade PPE and install ventilators <laughs> so that you can cut hair and, uh, and you know, do highlights? It's kind of... And wax eyebrows. At least for a lot of people, the actual just... just whatever it is that you have done at your salon or barbershop mm -hmm. is not really the entire point of it's going. It's secondary. Right. It's a social experience. Yeah. Right. And so, um, actually, the, the really good stylists I know, mm -hmm. all of them immediately, like within a month's time, were shipping out shampoos and styles and doing YouTube videos to engage their clientele and keep them hmm. engaged and to actually sell something. Yeah. Right? Uh, one of them put together an oil blend and all these different things, you know, to continue to provide some kind of service. And hosting video chats because a significant part of the experience is social. It's social, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, but no, long term, salons and barbershops are really going to get a raw deal. Yeah, and I think if we really followed uh, good public policy, that would it would still be kind of a kind of shaft. Yeah, but I mean, had we implemented good economic mm. policy, oh. we could have replaced their income. Yeah, we could have replaced their income, and they could have continued to pay rent and really just waited out. Waited it out. Yeah, if or, we engaged, you know, maybe the, if they wanted. If they're getting their UBI or whatnot, and and um, maybe they change careers, maybe, maybe they install they, a ventilator. I don't know. Or maybe they have a side hustle for a while, you know, which only could make them more resilient in the future. Is right. Some right. Uh, diversify their ability to earn income. Right. You so, know. so yeah, it, it's it's hard to imagine um, some of these things that happen on a regular basis. That have such intimate contact, like you know, you go to the the ophthalmologist or the optometrist. Yeah. They're right. They're right in your face too. Right. Right. Although, I, I think they may not actually have to be. They, I think there could be some modifications of the way they practice. But again, it's a medical setting. If we can we can use adequate protocols to get. They've got to peer into your eyeball with a slit lamp like or a, whatever. They, yeah, it's true. You know, and be able to see what's going on in there. Yeah. So. So yeah, uh, yeah, everybody mask up. But all that said, um, I don't think the the main problem that I've seen for us as a nation is that we have not made any public health policy whatsoever in response to COVID nineteen. We've tried to kind of craft an economic policy to respond to. COVID nineteen. We've Which, already yeah. spent far more bailing out corporations than, than individuals. Than individuals. But but I guess that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. Is um 
every policy that we've taken has been from an economic perspective mm -hmm. and not from a public health perspective as the starting point. As the starting point and right. as, as the, right. the guiding. Right. So the starting point is, okay, so how can we keep the restaurants open? Yeah. Right. Okay, right. so they can do takeout. Right. Which I, I, I know takeout could be safe. Yeah. But generally is not safe and depends entirely on the health and well-being of the employees right. working there. Right. Right. Just I think we've been doing it long enough that we're actually starting to get data. Yes. And I think that data is suggesting that takeout is is one of the safer things. Safer things to do. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's there's not there isn't like a transmission uh, a direct transmission vector. You're not hearing about like a uh, takeout place as a, a hot spot. As a hot spot, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, Although I'm not fully confident that we're doing enough contact tracing and to uh, really know. To really know, but I think we do know. I mean, we are doing. I think we're doing more than people think. Is kind of on the down low mm -hmm. uh, because we start to find out like what happened with church gatherings and what happened yeah. with spring break gatherings and what's been happening yeah. in Florida as businesses open and what stuff You've seen like that. that. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. Well, even, I, even what happened with in-person voting in Minnesota. Right. You know. Mm. So all this is to, is to say that we made decisions about how to keep restaurants functioning, not about how to keep people, stop people from getting ill. Yeah. Whereas public health policies are about how to keep people from getting ill. Right. Economic policies are about how to keep businesses functioning, how to keep people fed, and so on. Yeah. So we need to make public health policy to respond to the coronavirus and then make economic policy to fill in any gaps. And that just never happened. There was, I mean, the, I'm, you know, preaching to the choir, but there was no plan. And the, yeah. plan the plan was basically to let people die. The plan was to figure out how to support the stock market. Yeah. Um, and it's really not improved much from there. No, no. no and I, I, you know, I'm one of the people that think that Trump not appearing on TV every day with his <laughs> laughable task force and briefings, you know. <laughs> Uh, which really were campaign, <laughs> campaign <laughs> appearances and treated as such um, is a good thing mm -hmm. and it can only make us all happier and more sane mm. but it's just the fact that they're not even meeting except like twice a week now and yeah. and it's probably just it's largely just a perfunctory like have the governors tell us what's happening in and and well, well, for my part, I'd rather, I'd rather such a malicious administration not participate at all. At all, just go away. Exactly. Just go away. Just go away. Right. You know, <laughs> the the Wunderkind Kushner and his like secret cabal of businesses designed to extort PP from various. States and I, I, I still haven't gotten any rational explanation as to what the hell happened where they were like seizing protective ventilators. But, and, no, but like PPE, like truckloads of PPE would be pulled over by the feds and they would just take everything. I still don't have a rational explanation of that. What the hell happened? I, I where just, did it go? I really hope that I live long enough and, I, and everyone live lo you know, lives long enough that there will be books documenting. If not trials, books. Yeah, right. <laughs> Although, I, I know we are doing, we are learning more. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't not learn more. Yeah. Right? But there is this thing where, officially, we've had the fewest deaths since March 25th. Right. But there are thousands of yeah. mystery deaths every day. A dozen states tracked COVID deaths and cases are, are increasing. Yes. Well, tra tracked COVID cases, right? Yeah. And deaths. And deaths are increasing. Right. But there's this mystery illness mm -hmm. killing dozens of people every week in many states mm -hmm. and no one knows what it is. Right. Oh, yeah, a lot like of states. Like hundreds more than you know, than normal. Baseline. Yeah. Than baseline. 
Yeah, a lot of states just don't have adequate anything. Well, and a, these are people who have symptoms, who have all the symptoms, but they, right. they're a mystery death because... It's politicized. They were never... Well, it's, yeah. well, obviously it's politicized, right? But they're mystery deaths because they never received the test. So mm, the coroner is right. not recording COVID-19 right. on the death certificate. Right. And it's just, I don't know, it's a mystery death killed this person. Yeah. And generally speaking... We, we, it's it's just going to be ultimately like Iraq. Uh, you know where you get like how many people died and on what side and doing what and how were they killed? We have no we idea. We don't really know, I mean, and and you can't make a statement without it being a political a political cat statement. fight. You right. know, and yeah, so it's going to be the same way. Yeah. Like how many you know how many uh, uh, Vietnamese villagers did the United States kill? Well. That depends. Do you want to give the red, white, and blue a black eye? <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> why would you even talk about that? Yeah, why would you bring that up? All right, so truth is, you know, way down the list of priorities. Yeah. So, I don't know. But, yeah, so that's all the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm not fully confident that we're going to even know when Michigan cases spike again. And we're not going to be doing adequate contact tracing. Nope. Um, is all part of what's making me nervous, you know? Yep. I had a pretty basic routine mm -hmm. around working, which is um, a couple mornings a week I would stop at uh, one, or, one of two restaurants that I favored and mm -hmm. I would get a fried egg sandwich or an egg salad sandwich oh, that's so good. and a coffee right. and then head off to the office um, lunch I would usually have something in the office occasionally I would go out and grab something and on some days uh, work would order in like some sandwiches or something mm -hmm. um, and just about every, th every aspect of that now Mm -hmm. is not something I feel like I could do. Like, I, yeah, I would run out to much. Meyer to get sushi. Yeah. <laughs> sushi. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the last time I did that was, like, March 12th or something like that. It was a while ago. It was before, it was a few days before lock, we locked ourselves down. Yeah, we locked ourselves down, like, on the 13th. On the 13th. Yeah. Um, the... I'm not, I mean, as much as I want to support, shout out to Harvest Moon Cafe Whoop! and Coffee House Creamery, Joe and Rosie's on Jackson Road. Um, I don't know that I can feel safe going in there, right. either one. They, I don't know if Joe and Rosie's made it. I know that, that um, Harvest, Harvest Moon, Moon is going to reopen. So. There, there, there were people on the patio this evening. Were there? Yep. Okay. Um so I got, so okay, I'll eat at work. Okay, well, work has a, a shared fridge and a small shared kitchen on each floor. Mm -hmm. Right, so do I use the sink in the kitchen? I don't know how safe that is. Do I put my food in the fridge? That's probably safe, the probably. food containers, but like the counters probably aren't, unless no I'm going to be constantly sanitizing the counters. But the other thing is just like, okay, that's where people, that's like central on that floor. And so what's the risk of the droplet, you know, transmission in yeah. an area where everyone's passing by? And is it still, and I, taking I, I turns, didn't see any ventilation in that area at all. And, yeah, and taking turns using the kitchen. Right. And then the other place, of course, of concern is... At some point, I'm going to have to use the potty. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, the restroom has a ventilation fan and whatnot, but, mm. and I can wash my hands with soap and water and all that, right. but what about the droplet risk? Because everyone eventually winds up in the potty. Everyone winds up in there. Yeah. And then and there are no toilet lids in there. No. So you flush and... Of the spray, I mean, like the, the. Yeah. I'm thinking more about COVID in the in the air, but. Yeah, for people breathing, talking, uh, maybe they took their mask off or what didn't wear a mask in the bathroom. Yeah. Right. 
And how long does it linger? How long? I don't know. We don't. How, we actually we don't know yet. How good is the HVAC at turning over the air in the in the restroom? That's a good question. We don't know. So, like, okay. So, I mean, I'm putting some into place some things like. All right, I'm gonna wear some Crocs and socks, and those are gonna be my virus shoes. Yeah, boy. And I'll leave them in the car when I come home. Yep. I'm gonna wear some different shirts and pants just to work, and I'll change out of them when I come home, and I'll shower after work instead of before. Yep. And um, try to minimize risk that way, and I'm gonna, I guess, take my lunch in a cooler, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't expect to work, be in the office every day because I'm going to arrange to work from home. As you're able. Right. As I'm able. And that shouldn't... Uh, I can make that case that I can do a lot from home. So. Right. So... So, but, I, but yeah, this is all just so fucking ad hoc and nerve-wracking. Yes. And if I had confidence that anyone in charge... Took it seriously. From the all the way at every level. At every level. Not just in my company or in the state, but at the federal level, but at, at it, the CDC at every level. level, at the. Because I'm, yeah. I'm not. The CDC hasn't filled me with confidence either. No, they've been. All these institutions have been compromised and neutered or turned. You know. Right. It's just. It's really a mess. Turned into like loyalty to the. So the leadership is more important than than any than facts. mission statement. I mean, mission statement or facts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, although I hear that was it this uh, fired Florida employee's not maintaining her own website. Right. With tracking information. Right. <laughs> but the fact that that's that, that's a thing. That that's a thing is Jeez. just illustrates. Here we are. Yeah, I'm calling us a failed state because mm. I mean, our many of the institutions of the state are failing in their most basic... Your most basic responsibilities. Which is to protect the lives of citizens. You know, yeah. and non-citizens. And like, non-citizens. The people to break the lives of the people there. Right. And we have been calling it a failed state for some time. Yeah, well, I have, but I mean, I'm, I'm a radical, so... Right. So, that's... This is why. Like, you right. know, so if you've heard us say that before, and you're right. like, this is, what are you even talking about? This is why. This is an example. And it's it's been quite a long time since um, electoralism has had any meaningful influence on policy. Oh yeah. And so, at, especially at the federal level, thinking I want to say the New Deal thinking was the last time. thinking that voting for the blue guy instead of the red guy is going to do anything at all. It's wishful thinking. It's wishful thinking. And campaigns have absolutely no bearing on... Any reality. ...policy in office. And, of course, you know, we're basically being asked in November to choose between two doddering imbeciles. Yeah, it's good times. Um, so, but I'd say them. I, I say this to people all the time, um, that voting, the only thing voting changes is you. Mm -hmm. And that, and I, by that I, I don't mean to suggest that, you know, there's no reason to vote or that you shouldn't vote, or, or that you should. I, I just mean to clarify, don't lose the plot and think something's going on that's not. Right, that you're really going to be uh, like a yeah. magical, magical outcome. Right, um... The record doesn't show that. Yeah. yeah. That's not what the record there's no, reveals. There's no reason to believe that. Right. And and if you've got that much down, right. you know, do, do your best. And, Use you know, your best judgment and do what you think is right. Do what you... But, I mean, consider... I, I like to consider that of the voting you do, any local... Oh, because it carries a lot more weight. Any local th like uh, if, yeah. races may, may not, but, but may have a lot more impact on your actual lived experience lived experience your material circumstances Maybe your so. local governance than than anything that happens right. at a federal level no but mr floyd had democratic leadership at every level <laughs> and right. he's still a dead man right so um 
voting blue right doesn't necessarily do it for you right well I just want to say that having weeks and weeks at home to work every day on despite all the nerves about the mortgage and everything like that mm -hmm. um, noisy kids and all that and, and a lack of feeling like we have a total lack of assistance from anyone for schooling for oh, yeah. ha, for psychology <laughs> psychological help you know for mm -hmm. like food help for all this um it, it, uh, despite all that Mm -hmm. Being able to like work at home here with you and Joy on this shared project, our garden, garden project, project. which oh. is huge. It's been a wonderful experience. Just wonderful. I mean, yeah, I've been yeah. sunburned, covered with bug bites, sore. And you had that fever, that like black fly I had fever. black fly fever from the black fly bites. Pretty miserable last time. Yeah, the black fly bites were the worst, and yeah. so well, the spider bite was pretty. Spider bites are pretty too. bad too. Yeah. But, but that's but not that aside. That aside, I have lost sixteen pounds. Yeah, I'm tan and a little sunburned, but um, tanned, fit. I'm tan, rested, but not ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Tonight I'm going to. Uh, I'm not ready to go. I'm not ready to go. I'm like the, the, the doctor. This is the longest time in my life where I haven't either been very busy working or frantically looking for work since I was 14 years old. Mm. That's kind of transformative and also sad and sick. Yeah. Right? Well, that's... Chuck Norman was saying that. Shout out to Strong Towns. Yeah. He was saying, you know, actually... <laughs> People get time off and realize how great it is not to work all the time. This is the real reason they're tr forcing, they're trying so hard to reopen and get people get back, back to work, work and drive them off unemployment and whatnot. Is no, no. It's because if they realize that hey, they could still be incredibly busy and fulfilled people, right in their old homes, homes. and communities with each other, with each other, then maybe they wouldn't be quite so so ready to take a shit job. Well, so like. They wouldn't be quite so ready to talk themselves into being okay with what is effectively wage slavery. Yes. Right? Yes. At every level. I think that's actually the greater motivator than anything else on the table. Yeah. Is that we don't want that psychological switch to trip for people. Right. Especially because, the working classes. Because then they'll start demanding, like, better work. Yeah. And money. <laughs> they'll want to be paid adequately for the 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 literal moments of their life that that they're giving up in exchange yes so. federal federal minimum wage is seven dollars and twenty five cents yes um I think it's an insult to suggest that people are being paid if they're getting seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour right. right so yes i i i don't I don't consider that being paid anyway so that's where we are. I think we're going to wind up. Um, this has been kind of incoherent, but you understand if you've listened to why we're, we just don't have a lot of structure happening. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm going to uh, get some clothes folded up and ready to go tomorrow and um, ask you to brush out my long hair <laughs> and put it up in a ponytail. And then I'm going to go... It's gotten really long. Yeah. I haven't seen a... a Barber in years. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I've been calling you Gandalf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I did trim my beard. Yes. That, well, so you could fit the into beard, a mask. The beard was epic. Yeah, I wanted the mask to be a little more effective. Right. But um, And then I'm going to go take a couple boys and we're going to go... Sleep out in the yard. Sleep out in the tent. Yeah. And... Then I will no doubt wake up quite early because I always wake up early when I'm sleeping in a tent because the, the light and the bird song and the noise will wake me up yeah. very early. Hey, there probably won't be a robin at the window. I hope not. <laughs> Pecking. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened I to the screen. I wonder if he tore the screen. The robin tried, was trying to get in and tore the screen. 
Uh, oh, I was mocking the children for suggesting that an animal did it, but that... Maybe the robin did maybe it. Maybe the robin did it. Um, uh, we don't know. Anyway, Ro- I hate robins. So much. Um, but, um, yeah, and then it's... Off to work you go. Off to work. Hi-ho, hi-ho. And... It's off to work you go. Kind of in love with life. What, what is it Peter Watts says in his, in his blog? In love with the present, scared shitless of the future. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Till next time. Goodbye.